Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering ServiceNow Knowledge 2018. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of ServiceNow Knowledge 18. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We are theCUBE, we are the leader in live tech coverage. I'm joined by Landon Cook. He is the director, he is a director of customer service for the state of Tennessee. It's your first time on theCUBE. You're going to love it. Okay, great. I hope so. <laughs> Brand new. So, so you're a director of customer service. Before the cameras were rolling, we were talking, does, does every state have such a, such a department? Um, not exactly, and uh, even in our department, um, the idea and uh, the idea of customer service being a focal point and the creation of an office for us, it's, um, it's all brand new. So um, my office of customer service didn't even exist until five years ago, and I've had one predecessor in that time, and this all came uh, from uh, a new focus in state government on the customer service delivery model. And uh, usually we had been focused on federal rules and regulations, audit findings, always being good stewards of taxpayer dollars, but service delivery hadn't come from the mouth of the governor usually itself. So this is all pretty new for us, and from peers I talk with in other areas, I may have a contact who is maybe the lead of customer service in their area, but the idea of, a, of an office that exclusively exists to improve customer service throughout a department and eventually throughout the state, I believe that's all, That's we're in new territory here. So this is really the baby of your governor, Bill Haslam, yes. who has really said he wanted, what was it, customer-focused government. Yes. So what does that mean? So customer-focused government started in, right after Governor Haslam came to office in 2011. And um, the idea behind it, he created an initiative and he stated that our goal was to provide the best possible customer service at the lowest possible cost. And again, that, that may not seem that new in many industries, but in state government and state operations, that was kind of groundbreaking. And that's what's led to us talking actually about um, um, the customer experience, the agent experience, and how can we actually redefine customer, uh, customer service in government. And in and my department, we are one of 47 state agencies. And in my department, you know, I talked just briefly about the history there going back five years, and you see this slowly popping up in all of these different departments, and the idea is that we're all going to at some point be able to come together and deliver customer service as a state, instead of as in each individual department, um, we're actually going to be able to um, like share the scope of services and really tailor service delivery to each citizen's need um, through a login portal. Um, there's all sorts of stuff we talk about now that's brand new, I'm sorry. So, so it's helping citizens be, be do their citizenship duty. So yes. this thing's helping them register to vote, registering at the DMV, yes, getting fishing licenses, yeah. building permits, that kinds of thing. Yes. So how do you, so how do, you do it? How do you use ServiceNow to, to so we're babies here. So ServiceNow um, is the new CSM solution for the uh, entire enterprise for the state of Tennessee. Um, my department, the Department of Human Services, we are the uh, pilot agency for all those 47 I described. And we're about seven months in, so it's all been uh, pretty fresh for us. Um, but how this works right now is we're using it primarily for inquiry management, phone calls, emails, web forms and chat, things people typically think of as customer service. And so what we're doing with um, ServiceNow, and we started very carefully, very small, we, we had a very tiny pilot to start with. Um, but, we, but once we launched after October, we very quickly realized that ServiceNow was so collaborative and cooperative with us, and they were just as engaged in our success as we were, that we were building a partnership of CSM. It's kind of new to ServiceNow too, right? So it was new to us, new to them, and we're really kind of intertwining and growing together here. And even though we're using it just now for inquiry management and typical customer service delivery, once our department has it fully integrated through all of our various, we have 12 divisions just within our department. Once we have it integrated there, we're going to take that model and we're going to go to other state agencies. And we've actually already had, there are three other state agencies that are probably going to be joining on board if they haven't already. This has been a very fast stand up for us. And we're going to, Eventually, it's going to go from, well, wow, DHS delivers great customer service, and then instead, DHS is partnering with uh, the Department of Health to deliver customer service to people who need it. And we'll start slowly just putting everyone together so in the future, uh, citizens of Tennessee can just ask for assistance with something, 
excuse me, and the state knows what they need and the state knows how to deliver it and can do all that assignment and sharing of responsibilities behind the scenes through ServiceNow. Anything you can do to improve the yes. DMV experience. <laughs> so, I mean, but that is that is the thing. You're, you're, you're trying to make people's lives easier, better, simpler, more streamlined. Um, but what what was really, what was Haslam's goal? What, what was his impetus for starting this? You know, that's actually a hard one for me to say. I know what I can, I, I can, I've gathered that you know he came from a um, corporate background, and I think he had a different perspective on customer service than what is typical of state government. So he brought something new um, along with all of his prior experience. And I think he was the first who really made it a priority because I think he understood that um, the expectation of the customer is different nowadays, and it's different today than it was yesterday and last year, and it's always growing and changing. And uh, people of my generation and the generation uh, following me, they're all, always expecting something to be simpler, faster, and more based on their needs, right? And we state agencies had been so slow to react, we still use a lot of legacy systems. Um, before we launched the ServiceNow, all of our inquiry management was through Excel spreadsheets and um, Outlook uh, emails, and you know, those are great tools, but they're not designed for CSM. And so we had done a really deep dive uh, within DHS and within state government to look at, okay, where does customer service need to be focused on? Is it the people? It's not the people. We found that out very quickly. We have passionate people in the state of Tennessee. It's not the processes because people are doing what they can, but we needed a tool. And so with, with Governor Haslam's initiative and our understanding that we had to find a tool to better deliver service, we came on to ServiceNow just just a year ago. So I've been smiling ever since. So I, I feel it in my face. <laughs> You're a good advertisement. So <laughs> what, what are some of the improvements that you have seen? Okay. Um, so even when we were doing just our pilot phase, uh, we launched on October 2nd. And um, I was talking with a lot of people from ServiceNow then and from uh, the governor's office, and they said, try to get a snapshot of the before and be sure to compare it with the snapshot of afterwards. So I figured two months would be actually sufficient. And we were still in our kind of test and pilot stages, but we really, we knew pretty quickly we wanted to continue on with ServiceNow. So the two months prior, we were averaging um, inquiry assignment timeliness. So if, if you filled out an application or, or you submitted an inquiry to um, uh, my unit, the Office of Customer Service, the amount of time it would take to get from this time you submitted it to a person in, our, in the field or in program who could actually help with it, that was taking about 36 hours average. Some were faster, some were slower, some reached up to three days. And that's not even resolution. Sometimes that's just for us to even acknowledge that we got it and that someone's working on it. Um, afterwards, I, I looked at those two months uh, following, so October and November, and we were at like eight or nine minute average. Just, and it's because we, did, we knew we wanted something enterprise-wide, but we didn't quite anticipate the difference that workflow management would provide us. So we, all the parts that normally were all these handoffs, really, really, and I looked at it last Friday, it was 100 seconds. You know, we've, we've entered new measurement criteria every time I go back and look at it. <laughs> So lightning speed, lightning, ch lightning yes. fast changes. Re uh, uh, no kidding. And, and our resolution timeliness has come right on board alongside that. We've cut it, we've cut it down by, uh, to about 30% of what it used to be. We're able to just do our jobs faster and so we can get back to what people come into DHS to do is they, they come here to serve, they come here to try to help people. And this is taking away all that administrative responsibility so we can do what we're actually good at. Well, we're going to look forward to hearing what it is next year at oh. Knowledge 19. Thanks uh, so much for joining us, Landon. It was much, great Rebecca. having you on theCUBE. I Cube. appreciate it. I'm Rebecca Knight. We'll have more from ServiceNow Knowledge 18 and theCUBE's live coverage just after this.